Hello and welcome to my channel The Book Fetish. I recently gave a children's book to one of my friend as a gift and he found it a rather strange gift to have received. He is not a child of course and doesn't have children. So what on earth was I doing? Well, we can all get it wrong when it comes to giving books or anything for that matter. However, this little incident inspired me to start this channel by presenting you with children's literature in English. Children's books are not always just for children, as C.S. Lewis tells us. A children's story that can only be enjoyed by children is not a good children's story in the slightest. Some of the nursery rhymes as we know them today were, in fact, quite an adult thing in the distant past. Let's see just how. I have divided this episode in two halves. In the first part of this episode, I will pick a book and familiarize, or rather re-familiarize ourselves with nursery rhymes. In the second part of this video, I will get a little bit more historical about the origin of the nursery rhymes. Time to pick a book. Easy said than done. After aimlessly staring at my bookshelves for an hour or so, I finally saw... <laughs> I saw Esau sitting on a seesaw, I saw Esau with my girl. I That's right, it's I saw Esau, but not sitting on a seesaw. He's kissing Kate. The fact is, we all three saw, and he saw me, and she saw I saw Esau. It's the another popular version of I saw Esau rhyme, but it is also a title page of a lovely book called I saw Esau, the school child's pocket book, edited by Iona and Peter Opie, first published in 1947, just two years after the World War II. But I'm referring to the 1992 edition of I saw Esau, which is beautifully illustrated by the brilliant artist Maurice Sendak. Now, who remembers where the wild things are, or little bear? I will get back to Morris at some other point, but in this video, I want to look at the world of nursery rhymes. Here is my copy of Iso Iso, and it is still in pretty good condition. The hardback cover and spine are still firm, the dust jacket has seen better days, but it's a good reminder of how much this book has been loved. It includes 170 rhymes and yet it is a slimmer version of a much larger compilation of rhymes by Iona and Peter, their monument to the verses of children and folk culture published as the Oxford Dictionary of Nursery Rhymes. It is said that some of the best nursery rhymes, as they call them in England now, or Mother Goose Rhymes in America, are musical little pieces that children take delight into. They can be peculiar, unsettling and violent and question the very function of words. Take this narrative rhyme, for instance. Tom tied a kettle to the tail of a cat. Jill put a stone in the blind man's hat. Bob threw his grandmother down the stairs and they all grew up ugly and nobody cares. But then they are witty and thoughtful. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. Or this one. Order in the gallery, silence in the pit. The people in the boxes can't hear a bit. This one is my favourite. One fine day in the middle of the night. Two dead men got up to fight. A blind man came to see fair play. A dumb man came to shout hooray. In truth, there are no heads or tails to these rhymes. Their variety is as vast as their origins and reasons. There are various classes of rhymes. For example, counting out rhymes. Who doesn't remember eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a tiger by the toe? It seems rhymes are extremely organic in the way they develop and adapt. Numerous European variants of these rhymes has existed and so constantly they modify and shape to suit the necessity and wit of the time. But I'm going to give you an example of an Indian version of this rhyme which is as follows. Akkar bakkar bombe bo, asi nabbe pure so. Just like the English version of this rhyme, the first two words are the names or rather made up names for boys. Squeezed between them and the word Bo is the word Bombay for the city Mumbai. The second lines are the numbers, making it a counting out rhymes, 80, 90, complete 100. It is not all too innocent a game with rhymes. They very much carry the discriminatory flavour of the society they exist in. This particular rhyme was often a notoriously racist rhyme in the form of Eeny, meeny, miny, mo, catch a nigger by the toe, which was finally banned in the 1960s. The riddles are said to be the oldest known rhymes. The heydays of rhyming riddles are thought to be in the Elizabethan era, but in fact riddles have been popular since remote times. They clearly circulated in pre-literate culture, so it is not odd to find that they were already circulating in print culture as early as 1511. 
and in manuscript cultures across Europe three centuries before. The land was white, the seed was black. It will take a good scholar to riddle me that. In this book, the verses are categorized under many other titles, such as insults, characters, verbal forms, graces, game rhymes, school laws, lamentations. Here is a character rhyme for you. There were three ghostesses sitting on postesses, eating buttered toastesses and greasing their feastesses right up to the reestesses. Weren't they beastesses to make such feastesses? Now, if you were a feminist, these ghostesses will definitely be your gorilla girls. My next guests are a group of anonymous feminist art activists. Please welcome the gorilla girls, everybody. What I love about these rhymes is the way the tongue dances in the mouth when you read or sing them. What a joy reading and singing aloud. But nothing surpasses the tongue twisters. Try this one. How much wood could a woodchuck chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood? As much wood as a woodchuck could chuck if a woodchuck could chuck wood. I tell you what, I can't talk such blibber blubber. My tongue is not made of rubber. I bet there are rubbery tongues out there who can twist and turn faster than mine, so I better not lament. But have a look at this popular poem on lamentation. Such as moods and tenses bother my senses. Adverbs pronounced make me roar. Irregular verbs my sleep disturb. They are a regular bore. But it is the book protection verses that are my absolute favorite. I'm sure plenty of you have used these quirky little notes to guard your books in school. If this book should chance to roam, box it ears and send it home. A quirky little devil indeed. But about 400 years ago, one such little girl called Anne Harrison adoringly wrote in her Qualls book, Divine Poem. Steal this book for the fear of shame because you see the owner's name. Published in 1669, Qualls' Divine Poem is a special book in my possession. Not so much because of the text, but because of these handwritten inscriptions dating back all the way to 1747. It is fascinating to imagine what this book must have meant for Anne. I'm already tempted to do a small video investigating just this book and see what it has to offer. Perhaps a glimpse in the life of a girl from 18th century. But getting back to children's verses, some of these are quite opulent while others were wild and rude just to begin with. Such as this early version of Little Robin from 1700. Little Robin red breast sitting on a pole. Niddle noddle went his head and poop went his hole. One thing for sure, those folks in 1700 had a peculiar sense of humour. Here is the later version of this rhyme adapted to suit the nursery. Little Robin Redbreast sitting on a pole. Niddle Noddle went his head, Wiggle Waggle went his tail. There are also rhymes which are fragments from old romantic ballads of surprisingly free nature by today's standard for the use of the young. In the next part of this episode, I am going to look a little more deeper into the origins of rhymes, their transformation and adaptation to changing laws of discrimination at the turn of the 19th century. Thank you for watching this video. If you like this video, please subscribe to my channel and follow me to the part two of this episode, Not All Things Childish.